AIO temperatures are lying to you. It's true, but allow me to explain. Let's pretend a guy named Andy has been sporting a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo for the past year. He's satisfied with his 4.7 GHz i7-7700K temperatures, but wants to push the overclock a bit higher. Right now his core temperatures idle at around 30C, and things jump up to around 80 degrees Celsius immediately after starting IDA 64. Still not bad for a run-of-the-mill air cooler, but things could definitely be better. Andy realizes this, hops online, and decides to purchase an AIO like this one here, the Deep Cool Captain 240EX. Just insert your AIO liquid cooler of choice. These coolers use liquid, let's assume water with a few additives, that's usually what it is, as a medium of exchange between CPUs and the outside world. The water isn't making direct contact with the CPU, there's usually nickel plated copper or an aluminum base of sorts sandwiched in between, but nonetheless it's the water that ultimately transfers heat away from the source. And in comes the radiator. These vary in size and fin density, but essentially reverse the process that occurs at the block. Instead of heat being transferred from metal to water, the radiator transfers heat from water to metal and relies on installed fans to dissipate or radiate heat into the atmosphere. But here's where the lie begins. Andy removes his Hyper 212 Evo, installs the AIO, let's assume a constant max pump speed and a normal fan curve, and immediately checks idle temperatures. Much lower, right? Let's say 23, 24 degrees Celsius. Wouldn't make much sense for core temps to be lower than room temperatures. Andy then runs IDA 64 and notices that his immediate temperature jumps are much more controlled. Whereas his core temperatures jumped to 80 degrees Celsius before, they're only jumping to around 55 degrees Celsius now. Job well done, right? The AIO was definitely worth it. Well, let's see if he's still saying that in about an hour or so. In comes the misleading nature of AIOs, in comes specific heat. It's defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by a single degree Celsius or Kelvin. It is often listed as an intensive property with respect to mass, hence joules per gram Kelvin or joules per kilogram Kelvin. If we assume a copper cooling system and a perfect translation of energy from the CPU heat spreader to the cooler's base, that's what thermal glue seeks to do, then the cooler in question would be able to absorb only 0.4 joules of energy per gram of copper before increasing in temperature by a single degree Celsius. So in a nutshell, copper heats up very fast. It's a thermal conductor and most metals behave in this way. This is why Andy sees an immediate temperature jump with his air cooler when he first starts IDA 64. Copper is absorbing energy at the same rate that water would be in its place, but copper has a much lower heat capacity which means it heats up quicker. It's absorbing a certain amount of joules per second, denoted as watts, which is where TDP comes into play and is either passively or actively radiating this heat. Water on the contrary has a very high specific heat capacity which means that it can absorb a substantial amount of energy per unit mass before increasing in temperature by a single degree. Its specific heat capacity is 4.2 joules per gram Kelvin, nearly 10 times that of copper's. As a relational example, picture a stove with a pot of water. If the pot is made of metal, usually a sort of stainless steel Teflon combo, the metal will heat up at a much quicker rate than the water will, not only because the metal is in direct contact with the stove, but because its specific heat capacity is much lower. Your cookware reaches water's boiling point long before the water itself does, even though it's in direct contact with the metal. If both the water and alloy had the same heat capacity, they'd heat up at the same rate and reach water's boiling point at the same time. Water's high heat capacity and low viscosity make it an excellent coolant in several applications, including PCs, however ironic that may be, but do not be fooled. There are several misleading claims on forums and even other YouTube channels in regard to AIOs and their ultra-cool yields. The first has to do with load testing. When Andy first started IDA 64, the AIO's temperature spike was much more controlled, if you recall, 55 degrees Celsius versus 80 degrees Celsius. But this isn't the entire story. The entire story would reveal the thermal property differences between water and the metal in question, usually copper or aluminum. First off, Andy's initial temperature spikes were lower because water requires nearly 10 times the energy to reach the same temperature as the copper in the air cooler. Not only that, but the entire loop requires a length of time to equalize. I demonstrated this with Heisenberg's i7-6700K and the NZXT Kraken X62. It took nearly 42 minutes for the core temperatures to stabilize, much longer than a typical air cooler whose respective core temps would plateau much sooner. 
You can verify this yourself if you have your own air cooler in your PC, doesn't matter what size it is, your temperatures will peak within a few minutes or so. Now this isn't to say that AIOs are unnecessary, that's not the point of this video. Of course, this AIO from Deepcool will better cool your CPU than a Hyper 212 Evo hands down. It does a better job at dissipating heat, plain and simple, but not only thanks to the water involved. Also the 240mm radiator further down the loop. What I am trying to say is that AIOs are often misunderstood because their testers are often too impatient to wait for temperatures to stabilize, at least those who are posting on forums all the time that their temperatures drop by 40 degrees Celsius, which is usually not the case. If you let those things run for, I don't know, a couple hours with Ida64, you'll find that that delta is much smaller. I was watching a video from Joker Productions a few days ago. He built a sweet new PC and was discussing CPU temperatures. After running Ida64 for just over an hour, he said, on his 7700K Captain 240EX combo, his core temperatures leveled off at around 75 degrees Celsius. That's what I want to hear. He let the thing run for more than just a few minutes. 100% necessary for liquid-cooled systems. The T-delta can be much lower for air-cooled systems because metals heat up rapidly by contrast. But in comes the other side effect of AIOs, the fact that they stay hotter for longer after prolonged burn-ins. Even if all Andy does is play video games for a few hours at a time, they don't even have to be CPU intensive. His core temperatures will be higher for a much longer time after returning to an idle state because water tends to retain heat much longer than most metals do. Thermal diffusivity is a variable at play here of which specific heat is a function, but without using numbers, you can test this yourself as well. If you heat up an equivalent mass of both iron and water to the same temperature, let's say 80 degrees Celsius, and then set each aside to passively cool, the iron will reach room temperature again much faster than the water. So while water requires more energy to reach a certain temperature, it also wants to hold onto that temperature for a longer amount of time, which means that your idle CPU temperatures could be in the 40s or 50s long after you've finished gaming, running benchmarks, or rendering. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just a side effect of an AIO. You can tweak fan curves to speed up this process, by the way. It is something to keep in mind, though, as it's often overlooked by first-time users of closed and even custom loop assemblies. Blue Sky will also have this problem, but not to any significant degree thanks to its two large radiators. You can't change the properties of the compounds, but you can change the environments in which the compounds react. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I will catch you in the next video, waiting to finish good old Blue Sky. This is Salazar Studio, thanks for learning with us.